NBA legends. Their rises of stardom began in their high school years. Early glimpses of the superstars that they would become. From their triumphs to setbacks, each made a different journey from obscurity to national recognition. Their stories are worth telling. This is Tom Chambers' story. American high schools in the 1970s were producing some of the greatest players to have ever played the game. But these fascinating early years are rarely documented, and their stories remain largely unknown. The story of Tom Chambers' rise to stardom begins in the fall of 1974 at Weber High School in Ogden, Utah. Hailing from an athletic family, Tom's older brother Robert was already a senior star center on Weber's basketball team, a winning team comprised of experienced seniors. Young Tom was a three-sport athlete, but the 6'2 sophomore would discover that his best talent was in basketball. Not making the senior-laden varsity team, Tom would mostly play guard on Weber's JV team and reportedly average an incredible 35 points per game. But the Chambers family would be on the move, with father Ken Chambers receiving a job transfer to bustling Aurora, Colorado, where Tom would enroll at Aurora Central High School for his junior year. But an astonishing transformation had taken place with Tom, having unexpectedly grown six inches in just six months. And this huge growth spurt amazingly didn't affect Tom's game, having kept his ball handling skills and athletic coordination. Tom would later recount, when I went to Colorado, there was a mile high one-on-one -on -one basketball tournament there at the time, and I entered and won the thing. It just let me know that I had the potential to be really good because I had become a six foot eight inch player at that time. And adding, going into my junior year, I grew so much and was able to finish at the basket over big people and started dunking the ball regularly and just really started working on my inside game. At Aurora Central, Tom would team with 6'9 senior center Mike Dow and transform Aurora Central into a state basketball power with Tom averaging 22 points and 10 rebounds per game while earning all state honors and projected to be among the nation's top big men going into his senior year. But a little known aspect of Tom's development was his time playing in heated pickup games on the Aurora basketball courts at Del Mar Park. Years later in a newspaper interview, Chambers reflected on his stereotype-defying, high-flying athletic playing style. I learned a lot of things on the playgrounds that I never would have learned working out in a high school gym. Behind the back passes, double pump moves, all the stuff a coach would never let you do. I was the only white guy out there, and when you compete on the playgrounds, you're not out there to shoot jump shots. What matters is how strong you go to the hoop, dunking, and the moves you make. Just hitting an open shot wasn't enough. It had to be a fadeaway from 20 feet. But suddenly, the Chambers family would again be on the move due to a second job transfer to Boulder, Colorado, where Tom would enroll at Fairview High School for his senior year. Chambers would be joining a team led by senior All-State point guard phenom Jim Feeney, who was the catalyst for Fairview's successful up-tempo playing style and coached by fiery coach Tom McCracken. With the addition of 6'9 Chambers at center and his extraordinary athletic ability fitting perfectly into their up-tempo system, Fairview would become an elite high school team, being ranked among the top 20 high school basketball teams in the nation by Prep Sports magazine. Chambers would be nearly unstoppable on offense, but it was his stifling defense and rebounding that would initiate their running game, leading to easy buckets. Chambers' dominance on both ends of the floor would propel Fairview to average an astounding 91 points per game, a Colorado high school record, including seven games over 100 points. As Fairview's go-to player, Chambers would show his complete offensive arsenal and so thoroughly outplayed opponents that he would sometimes leave the game before the fourth quarter. Coach McCracken would describe Chambers in one word, dominating.
Chambers would twice break the school rebound record with games of 25 and 27 rebounds and led the state in both scoring and rebounding at 27 points and 17 rebounds per game. But it would be the friendship that he forged with Jim Feeney off the court that would translate to an on-court synergy, maximizing both players' talents and giving a preview of what Chambers would become when he teamed with Kevin Johnson a decade later. Coach McCracken would put together a well-oiled machine, a group that would come together to play as one, with the goal of winning a state title. Led by Chambers, Fairview would advance to state and play at Denver's new McNichols Arena, home of the Denver Nuggets, where Fairview stormed through the first rounds of the state playoffs. Fairview would face Pueblo East and their All-State center 6-9 Dave Netherton in the semifinals. Up by one point with one second left in the game, Fairview would be called for a controversial foul on a Hail Mary shot by Pueblo, which sent them to the line to sink two free throws to win the game. Stinging from their devastating loss, Fairview and Chambers would return the following day to play Wheat Ridge for state third place. Wheat Ridge, who lost by just two points the day before, featured three future Division I players, including their 6'8 star, Craig Austin. In his final game for Fairview, Chambers would go off, scorching Wheat Ridge for a state tournament record 50 points, while also pulling down 16 rebounds in a 25-point blowout win. Chambers would be named an All-American, and also to the Best in West first team along with three other future NBA players. Coach McCracken would later call Chambers the best player he ever coached in his 35-plus years of coaching high school and college basketball and Chambers would be given the special honor of playing for Team USA High School All-Stars against the Soviet Junior National Team and would lead Team USA with 21 points in a four-point loss to the bigger Soviets, a team that had been living and playing together for months. However, Chambers' final high school game would be in the Colorado All-State All-Star Game where he would dominate with 26 points and 16 rebounds and be named the game's MVP. With several top college programs hotly recruiting him, Chambers would sign with the University of Utah where he would take his game to the next level which we will take a look at in the next video.